slavery. Not a five. It don't pay me less. It pay my bills at minimal, but see it pay me stress. Doing this, doing that. That's what I be really speaking Cause even though it's just me Yo, obviously What makes this shit And this more is living poverty Obviously I gotta work Suck it up and give a smirk Smile and even though it hurt And see my boss with the open dirt Right, we have been so lucky over the last couple of weeks because we've had these uh, bikes on loan from Husqvarna, both the 150TE and the 250TE as well. We've been riding here in the Lake District, having an absolute blast. Um, so look, this is gonna be a, a review. It's not gonna be um, the most techie review you've ever seen. Um, as you know, Knox is not like a, a motocross channel or purely an enduro channel. There's plenty of them, uh, plenty of different, more technical uh, reviews out there on YouTube. So you can go and check out other channels. But this is gonna be from our point of view, doing what we've been doing, which is basically enduro riding here in the Lake District in, in, in England, um, and just been having a fantastic time. So I'm gonna be talking about that, how we got on with the bikes, and you know a couple of quirky things from our own point of view too. So both me and Jeff have been riding the 150 and the 250 and in that time we've kind of uh, split the time equally actually so we've both equally had uh, a similar amount of time on each machine and actually both of the machines are pretty similar in terms of if you look at the frame the suspension the brakes the tires all that kind of stuff they're pretty much uh, very similar so I'm going to be talking in the review about them as a, as a whole and then specifically I'll refer to the differences in terms of the engine and the way that that affects the ride on each thing so they're not going to be separate reviews one on the 150 one on the 250 it's in this uh, family of re reviews so hopefully that makes sense so with that bit out of the way let's get into the review so the first things first these bikes are the right tools for the job so if you're looking to do any sort of enduro work or you're looking to hit your local trails or get into off-road riding or something like that, these are absolutely phenomenal. Basically, they're competition machines with a license plate and lights. That's kind of what they are. They're designed for a very specific job. And my gosh, do they, do they eat the off-road terrain like in an incredible way. They're absolutely phenomenal. You know, so for a comparison, um, we've rode uh, adventure bikes quite a lot this year. I actually spent quite a lot of time on the 790 Adventure RKTM. And, you know, we hit some of the trails again around the Lake District on that bike. And you know what? You can do some stuff on those on those type of bikes, but they they don't compare in any way, shape or form to something to, to one of these bikes. They're just totally chalk and cheese. For example, one of the trails we hit, um, on the 790 that was actually pretty challenging to be fair the bike was a bit of a handful going up there we did do it but it was quite a handful and therefore we got to the same trail on these bikes with a little bit of apprehension thinking crikey how are we going to handle this because it was quite gnarly last time and I'm telling you we just rode up there like it was like it was flat almost it was just chalk and cheese these bikes are just the right tools for that type of job so it's hard to believe the level of grip, nimbleness, the power delivery and how that all sort of combines to make these bikes just so good for riding off-road terrain. Um, you kind of need to ride one to be able to experience it. And unless you're like a Graham Jarvis, you can guarantee pretty much that these bikes are better than you're gonna be and you're gonna just grow with them but you're not gonna be limited by the bikes because they are literally incredible. And the way that these bikes glide over the rocks and ruts and mud and puddles and um, you know little river crossings, all that kind of stuff, is really, really confidence inspiring. And it'll have you tackling much, much bigger stuff than you could have expected. I mean, you know, the beginning of the day, we were looking at some of these really steep bankings and thinking, crikey, that looks like I'm not sure we'd be able to do that and by the end of the day we're going right up it absolutely no problems really confidence inspiring of course nothing quite looks on camera uh, the way that you see it uh, you know for yourself um, but look, look, I'm telling you some of the sections that we did yesterday were really gnarly they were really steep and really rocky um, but you know needless to say the bikes handled it absolutely no problems look, the way I look at these enduro type bikes is it's just tens and tens of years of, of, of development, trial and failure, rider input, all that kind of stuff, making 
uh, you know, the result is a really specific machine that's just designed to tackle off-road and stuff. And that's, that's what these bikes are about, basically. So all the things that would be important to Enduro riders, like super lightweight, uh, great uh, engine with great tractability, great grip, uh, great handling, nimbleness, all that kind of stuff is just baked in and it ticks all of the boxes in the Enduro checklist of these Husqvarna's. So at the heart of both of these machines is a brand new and really recently revised two-stroke engine, uh, both the 150 and the 250. Now it has to be said, there's something really endearing about a two-stroke, uh, the sound of them, the power delivery, the fact that they're slightly, um, they're a little bit rough around the edges and that just sort of adds the two-stroke character. And I can totally see why people really are loyal to that two-stroke thing, because it really is, um, yeah, it's quite endearing actually. Now the two-stroke engines fitted to the 2020 Husqvarna range are fuel injected now. And that for me is a massive step forward to where I thought that two-strokes were. Because obviously in, in previous lives, you'd have had to you know, pre-mix fuel and all that kind of stuff, put your two-stroke oil in with your petrol, mix it and get that perfect, then tip it in the bike and then hope you've got the mix right and that the bike rides nice basically now it's totally different so it's kind of like an ad blue in that you'd have in a modern diesel car for example so you have a, a separate tank there where you put your two-stroke oil in and then you have a separate tank for your petrol and then there's an injection that goes on and basically the engine then injects the two-stroke oil into the fuel and it's basically perfectly fueled so you're not going to have the same problems with regards to um you know the way that the bike uh, is fueled or it rides or anything like that it's much much more user friendly and to be honest for me as a new enduro rider I c if that was the case pre-mix and fuel i just couldn't be bothered um you know because they're two strokes and you're riding them pretty hard you do burn through quite a lot of fuel and just to think about doing that all the time i just couldn't be bothered so that's a massive convenience um, that these new Husky 2020 models are, are, are baking into their products. So the main difference between the 150 and the 250 is obviously the number and that's the amount of cc's that's in the engine. So the 150 cc is uh, a lighter bike as well so this comes in at 99 kilos on fueled uh, versus 105 so there's about five kilo difference which you know in competition standards might be uh, quite a lot but in practical terms in terms of just laymen like me and you just using them it doesn't really make a great deal of difference you'd be hard pushed to tell the difference in 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 a in a regular type of environment that we're in i would say the 150 is quite uh it's quite zingy actually for off-roading um there's not a great deal of difference you know you're still going to be able to do exactly the same stuff whether you're on the 150 or the 250 i think your sort of speed to get up the trail is actually going to be more to do with rider ability rather than the engine because they're both pretty comparable in terms of the speed off road um, i think it's going to come down to your more ability basically um, and if it was purely off road i'd be happy just to take the 150 every time because i just think the it has, well, it's a little bit lighter, it's a little bit cheaper, all that kind of stuff. Um, where it kind of does come into play for me is on the road. Basically, both of these bikes don't ride on the road very well, just in my opinion. I think they're pretty hard to live with on the road, and particularly the 150 is really hard to live with on the road. Now, you guys in the States might not have this, but in the UK, um, you can only ride so, so many trails and it's about a 20 mile commute to our ne nearest trail where you can go and ride uh, one of these bikes. So you've got to ride on the road for 20 miles basically. And on the 150, it's, it's just hard work. You know, you're hitting 50, 60 mile an hour. And the thing is just, it's just either on or off at that type of speed. It's, really hard work it's really loud and it's just very you know it's quite um on the edge uh that and for that reason i i would probably choose the 250 because it's got a lot longer gear in it's got more uh, more torque and it's just a lot easier to ride with on the road basically. And of course then that does translate to off-road because you are able to ride probably a little bit lazier on the 250. So most, you know, most sections are gonna be like second, third gear. You can be a little bit lazier. It's got more torque just to drive you up the hill. 
and that probably translate to, translates to a more relaxed and comfortable experience. So if I was gonna go for one of these personally, I'd definitely be choosing the 250, purely from that point of view, the commute to the trail and the commute home again and the fact that it's slightly more comfortable and a little bit more lazy on the trails as well. I'd be choosing a 250. That being said, I haven't uh, ridden the four strokes. And I'd love to have the opportunity to do that. But even with that in mind, I'd still definitely choose a 250 because it's, it's just a really good choice. I'd be, so, I'd be totally happy with that. For me as well, I have to say that Husqvarna do the best looking enduro bikes on the market, in my opinion. I just think that they do. Husqvarna have some really nice looking bikes. And at the same time as having these, we've had the Vitpillen and the Svartpillen road models. And I think that about them as well. I think they're such good looking bikes and that translates to the enduro range as well. Basically at Knox, we make all of the gear that we ride in, um, both on the trail and on the road. And honestly, I couldn't think of better gear that you could wear on this type of bike. Um, you know, we rode all day yesterday. We had quite a few tumbles. It was freezing cold and we were kitted out all day. All the links for everything that we've been wearing are in the description, so you can go and check that out right now. Now, while I've been singing the praises of these enduro bikes, I have to say I do have some issues with them. Um, they're not perfect in my experience. Now, obviously, I'm coming from probably a slightly different angle than some of the guys who are typical customers for these type of bikes but there are two main issues for me. And that first one is security. Well, basically there isn't any. So the first question I asked when these bikes got dropped off was, well, where's the keys? Because normally you get keys with a bike. And of course the driver said, well, there isn't any keys. For me, that was a real surprise because I thought, well, these are road legal bikes. I'm gonna to have to use them in a sort of practical setting. There's absolutely no security. So you can just walk up to one of these bikes press the, the switch. That, that's, it, that's it going, you know? So basically, um, if I was to ride into work uh, and figure that, you know what, I'm gonna chain it to a lamppost or something, a kid could still walk up to it, click that button and start the bike. And, and not quite know how to knock it off either. So, you know, for me, that's a real issue. And um, then you start thinking about, well, okay, well, what about if we're out on the trails for the day and I want to stop for lunch? Do I go into a place and leave my bike unguarded because I don't want to carry a big chain with me? How do I sort of negotiate that without leaving the bike totally vulnerable? Um, how do I go and fuel it up with petrol and then go into the petrol station and go and pay for it? You know, there's just tons of practical questions on that security front. But the fact that it's got no security on it just adds in a load more complications that I wouldn't have thought had to be there. And I actually think they're quite an easy add-on. Um, and I think Husqvarna could, and other enduro bike manufacturers could add this on to their bikes really, really easily. I just think, you know, for me, it's a bit of a barrier. and. The price that they are, I wouldn't want to be, you know, spending loads and loads of money getting it secure, you know, in terms of putting ignition barrels on it, steering locks, all that kind of stuff. Um, hopefully no thieves are watching this because actually, you know, these bikes are so ridiculously easy to steal. In a city or if you're in a, a more populated um, area, I can see that just being a massive problem, a massive concern to people who own these bikes. And the second issue for me personally, and coming from my perspective, is that they need to be more road orientated. And I know that sounds kind of terrible because that's not what these bikes are designed for. But, you know, in England, certainly you've got, you know, whichever trail and wherever about, about you live, you have got a commute that you've got to get to uh, the trail and then go and do your stuff and then come home on a road. These bikes are not great on road. There's no mirrors, there's no indicators, the front light and the rear light are not that great. I just think that some of these things could be added quite easily. I think they could add in some mirrors that fold away. I think they could add in some indicators. I think they could add in a horn that actually works. The horn doesn't work, um, for example. And it's just little quirky things like that that I think would just complete these bikes and make them more usable for the kind of riding that we were doing. So this type of pure enduro bike is pretty new to me um, and therefore I was quite interested in regards to the servicing and how you maintain them. And 
This type of enduro bike is actually done in hours. So, you know, on a road bike, you would do it in miles. So it'd be like a five or 10,000 mile service or something. This is done in hours. So um, we start off at like 20 hours, 40 hours, 80 hours. You hear people talking about, it's quite daunting really. Um, but actually having had quite a long chat with the local uh, Husqvarna dealer, actually it's not that big a deal. We have about 90% of uh, owners actually servicing their own bikes. I'm not sure whether that invalidates the warranty or not, but he reckons that about 90% of owners um, actually maintain their own bike. And actually when you get the Husqvarna um, service manual, a lot of the things that the 20 hours and 40 hours are, check this, check that you know, uh, lubricate this and lubricate that. So there's a big long list, but a lot of it is pretty simple stuff. And actually you might find that it's a good opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about motorcycle maintenance in order to do that. Some of the bigger jobs you are gonna need to go to the Husqvarna dealer, unless you're like some sort of super uh, mechanic, you know, piston changes and, um, you know, major, major engine rebuilds at 80 hours and stuff like that. That's probably going to need to go for expert help. But all the other little bits and pieces, you'll probably be interested to do that yourself. So the pricing for these models, you've got the 150 at 8149 and then you've got the 250 at 8599. They seem quite expensive, but what you've got to remember is these are proper uh dedicated competition machine so you've got to bear all that in mind you've got proper wp forks you've got Migura brakes you've got you know it, it's got all the bells and whistles to make these the best that they can be now you've also got to bear in mind that uh, husqvarna quite often have uh, zero percent finance on these bikes which make it uh buying them a lot more affordable and there's also quite often clearance deals because they replace and update these bikes every year so that's been our review of the both the 150 and the 250 uh, te from husqvarna absolute phenomenal bikes the real weapons for the type of thing that they're designed for which is enduro riding and eating up trails and while i don't think they're perfect in every circumstance and couldn't be improved in a couple of little ways I can't deny but the fact that they are absolutely phenomenal at what they're designed for. So I hope you've enjoyed that review. Please like, please comment. I'd love to hear what you think about these bikes. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already and uh, we will see you next time.